Well, Josh, Matt, good to be with you both uh, as well. I do agree with the decision to revoke his playoff eligibility temporarily. We'll get into that uh, in just a second. Um, but with all due respect, I don't know, but I agree with our thumbnail and show title tonight because I don't know what the precedent is now. I thought the precedent was if you right rear hook somebody, you get sat out for a race. And I think Bubba Wallace fans today have every right to be outraged. Chase Elliott fans today have every right to be outraged. What is the precedent now? We don't know what the precedent is. We we now know today that apparently you can right rear hook somebody less than five seconds after you already spun another driver out going into turn three. You can do a right rear hook coming out of turn four, and you can not only keep your victory, but you don't get suspended for that. You're going to go to Michigan and you and make no mistake about it. He's still playoff eligible. They, they took his playoff eligibility away in terms of the fact that he won a race. It's not going to count, but he is still playoff eligible. If he goes out and wins Michigan where he's had some good runs in the past, he's won twice at Daytona before. He had to use the bumper both times to do that one as well, but he's won at Daytona. He could do it again, and he finished second in the Southern 500 in 2020 at Darlington. So I, I'm not expecting it. I think where that car has run this year, Richmond was certainly an anomaly. I don't expect him to go out and win any of those three races, but I feel better about his chances there than I would at three other different tracks to end the regular season. So, and, and by the way, docking him 25 driver and owner points. So what? So he got, so he went from 20, 32nd to 26th back down to 31st. Now what difference does it make? He's still got to win a race. And, and, and if he does, he'll finish minimum 16th in the standings. And I guess they can enjoy their charter bonuses that, that come with that on the owner's points side of things. I don't know. I, I think that it's a total nothing burger to take points away given the situation that he's in right now. So I appreciate at the bare minimum that this isn't going to get him into the playoffs. But the message that I've gotten from NASCAR now is that you can do this to win a race. And if you are fine with that win, not getting you into the playoffs in a season where, if we're being honest, you're, you've been a 31st, 32nd place car for much of the year, you're not going to win the championship anyway. So if you're fine, if, if to you winning's all that matters and there's no difference between 16th and points and 30th and points, then you can do this to win a race. And the record book will always and forever show that you won that race at Richmond. And it'll always and forever show that you got to come back the next week in Michigan because what we thought the precedent was apparently doesn't exist anymore. But you know what bothered me the most was listening to Elton Sawyer when he sat down with Kim Kuhn a couple hours ago, I guess, as the news was coming out. And this is a tweet from uh, Davy Siegel. Uh, quoting Elton Sawyer and saying, drivers understand where the line is. This penalty shows them, quote, we know where the line is as well, and this is not something that we're going to tolerate. Are you kidding me? You are, you are by definition tolerating this. Yeah. Now, you can make the argument that you're not accepting it. At least you took the playoff eligibility away, so he, he, you're not accepting it in that regard and that he's reaping the full benefits of this victory. But by letting him keep the win and maintain playoff eligibility because you didn't suspend him, so the waiver isn't even a question. And I guess the precedent from Chase Elliott is the waiver would have been granted regardless. But he keeps the win. He maintains his playoff eligibility because he's not going to have to sit out a race. If that's not tolerating this move to win a race, then I don't know what is. So I just I, it, it is very hard for me to sit here today and find closure in what we saw Sunday night. Because to me, this this was deemed an acceptable move. I mean, th this is a slap on the wrist penalty. He wasn't going to win a championship anyway. He still has a shot to get in the playoffs to finish 15th or 16th or whatever the hell that means for his season. And he gets to keep the win. It's just mind boggling to me. And I don't and I don't know what the precedent is now. We, we can we can sit here and say, well, a, a line's been drawn. They know where the line is now. I don't know where the line is now. Bubba Wallace didn't have to sit out a race. Chase Elliott's did this, he had to sit out a race. Austin Dillon did it for the win on the last lap, coming to take the checkered flag. And he's going to Michigan next week. I don't understand. Another thing I think that Elton Sawyer said was that, you know, people are going to bring up those two examples and say, well, why wasn't he? And he said those happened at mile and a half tracks where the speeds were closer to 160 miles an hour. And? Well, I don't know. You can go back to Matt Kenseth in 2015. That was a neat Martinsville's speeds, I guess, are even lower than well maybe not because that was at the end of a straightaway but whatever it's a short it's a short track and it's it's even a shorter track than richmond is and matt kins have got two races for that so i don't 
and, and Denny Hamlin, ironically enough, having been involved in this as well, got on the radio when that happened and said, I just can't get over what this sport has come to, just how mm. bleeped up it is. How do you even crown a real champion now? And that that's one of my all-time favorite quotes because we're, we sat here for nine years and it's only continued to get worse and worse. And I, I don't know. I, and I didn't even bring this up on, on Encore on Monday because there, there's, like I said, so many different layers to this year. Isn't this the same guy that the week after Chase Elliott got suspended, he was whining about Austin Sindrick supposedly hooking him in the right rear for something that was much more egregious, much closer to a racing incident. And he said, I hope Sindrick has to sit out next week. Well, and then he goes and does this. I mean, I mean, I just, I cannot wrap my head around the fact that he's going to be racing next week. And I didn't, I, I apologize. You guys said my audio was fine before the show started. I apologize to the listeners. If the microphone quality isn't as good, I didn't bring my mic today. I'm still in my work office because I didn't think I'd have to come on the show tonight because I was that confident that he was going to be suspended and I could just get my brief thoughts across in the chat room. But apparently I had too much confidence in the sanctioning body here. <laughs> but I had to come on the air tonight to give my opinions because I am just losing my mind at how the only thing we appear to be capable of being consistent on in this sport is inconsistency. And by the way, people arguing NASCAR you know, had no precedent. There was nothing in the rule book that said that they could overturn the win or whatever they put a 13th driver in a 12th driver chase 11 years ago so don't don't give me that crap like there's, no, there's nothing in the rule book that says we can do it. you added a driver to the playoffs off of something that had to do with an entirely different organization don't tell me there's nothing in the rule book that has a clause that allows us to do it. you you clearly there's a precedent that's been set that you can make it up and as you go along to your point matt and they're going to try to argue during the appeal, oh, Denny actually can't, because fans were doing this yet, the, the, the last couple of days as well. If you, Oh, Denny crossed the white line. He came up. Well, of course he came up. He's taking the typical racing line out of a corner, mashing the throttle, moving up the track, arcing the corner to try to win the race. And Austin Dillon, if you look at the SMT data, was turning 30 degrees harder to the left than he would have on his normal racing line because he had every intention to right rear hook Denny Hamlin and take him out so he could win the race instead. And he's still going to get to go to Michigan next week because apparently there is no precedent. This is the top level of stock car racing in the world. And we have just sent a message to every kid watching this, to every young late model driver watching this, to every truck series driver and Xfinity series driver watching this, that you can right rear hook somebody on a short track intentionally and get to keep the win what can you afterwards. name me a series where they would look at that finish and not immediately say clear and obvious there is no way you get to keep this victory does one exist i can't think of one kyle petty said the same sort of thing when bubba wallace got suspended to kansas that was the same day where one of kyle bush's pit crew members didn't get a wheel fully attached or there was some sort of pit crew violation Mm. And that crew chief yeah. and pit crew member get a four-week suspension for a minor pit road infraction. But you can right rear hook somebody going 100, uh, 170 miles an hour, turn dead left, right, hit them in the right rear, spin them out, and you only get one. So, again, I, I have no problem with a three-race suspension. Matt, as you even said, I you can't be saying that as a spotter. You have to send a message that that's unacceptable. I wouldn't have a problem – uh, at least putting him on probation through the end of the year, at the very least, for sure. Um, mm. But for to to suspend, mm. telling a guy, wreck him, three races. Guy actually goes ahead and wrecks him through a right rear hook, zero races. Mm. That is very like, hard for me to reconcile. 